Hi everyone, welcome back to this tutorial. In this video, we can discuss about the organization of microprogram sequencer. So, first of all, consider the parts of a microprogram based control unit. Here we have a control memory that can store the micro instructions of a microprogram as its memory words. And associated with here we have another circuitry for generating the next address of the micro instruction to be executed or next address of the micro instruction to be fetched from the memory in order to start its execution. So this address generating unit of this control unit is called as the microprogram sequencer. Once more the address generating part of our control circuitry is known as the microprogram sequencer. So this one diagram we have already discussed in our previous video okay so this sequence register this particular circuitry is used for generating the address of next instruction to be executed right so that particular circuitry is called the microprogram sequencer so before starting about the discussion of our uh, microprogram sequencer organization we need to understand what types of information this circuitry want to generate or else we need to consider the capabilities of our microprogram sequencer the first case the uh, sequencer can perform or generate the address by the method of incrementing current content by one the current content of control address registered by one so consider this particular diagram this is the control address register. Here we can hold the address of next instruction to be fetched from the control memory. This particular diagram we have already discussed in our previous video. Right? About the organization of control unit based on microprogram based method. Okay? This control address register unit is used for holding the address of next micro instruction which is to be fetched from the control memory so in a, in the case of sequential execution of instruction we can generate the address of next instruction to be executed simply by incrementing the current address value from this control address registered by one this is the case of sequential instruction execution increment the current content of control address registered by one and the second situation is branching right we need to branch to some other distant location of our currently executing program sometimes we need to branch to some other distant location by avoiding sequential instruction execution like if else case execution right so in that case we need to load our control address register by a distant branch target address by avoiding sequentially next address from this control memory we need to load this control address register by a branch target address okay so similarly based on the value of our status bit right this is clear from this diagram this particular multiplexer output decide whether to perform an increment operation over this control address register or to perform a loading and loading an external address to this control address register so this decision is based on this status information right control carry bit zero bit sign bit and overflow bit all these are the bit of our status register based on the values of these status bits this multiplexer decide based on the selection pin value this multiplexer select one among these status bit as the output of this multiplexer and the current value of that particular selected status bit information decide whether to perform increment operation or load operation load an external address operation to this control address register if this selected status bit value equal to 1 
then it prefer a loading loading and distant address information here address information from the address field of current micro instruction or loading from an external address source otherwise if this selected status bit value equal to 0 it perform an increment operation current value of control address register get incremented by 1 that indicate the address of the next instruction to be executed that case actually prefer sequential instruction execution okay so basically we can say this sequencer can support branching also at the next case transfer control to a new address as specified by an external source okay we can transfer an external source an address specified by an external source to this control address register this is the case of starting the execution of a new program whenever we want to start the execution of a new program we want to specify the starting address of our program that particular address is specified usually by an external address source okay so let us it, we want to uh, store sometimes address from external source in order to start the execution of a new program and also it can support subroutine calling and return what is this subroutine call and return we have already discussed about this in our first module subroutine calling and return means so uh, suppose we are executing a main program before completing the program we need to switch the control from the current main program a particular point from a particular point of our current main program to a subroutine or to the starting of a function right in that case before transferring the control from the main program to the subroutine we need to store the starting address sorry we need to store the return address of our main program return address means the point from where the main program execution is suspended okay so the return address must store into the stack top then transfer the control from main program to the subroutine starting location then after completing the execution of subroutine pop the return address from the stack top and transfer control back to the main program and resumes the execution of main program and finally complete the main program execution so from this it is clear that the sequencer can support sequential execution branching and starting of different micro program execution as well as subroutine calling and returning okay from this we need to understand the sequencer circuitry can perform or sequencer circuitry must perform all these type of activities as and when required okay so consider our micro program sequencer circuit this is our circuit okay here we have this control address register that means our sequencer's duty is to load our control address register by different next address information okay so from the from the previous slide it is clear that we have four different possibility sometimes we need to load this control address register by external address in order to start the execution of new program execution and some other times we need to perform branching right branching means branching from a location to another location a distant location of our uh, of the same program like e else execution branching from one point of the same program to a branch target location of the same program some other times we want to branch from the main program to subroutine okay the another case is sequential execution the second input indicate sequential execution that means next address information is obtained by incrementing current control address register value by one right and this one actually indicate after the execution of subroutine 
after branching to a subroutine and after completing the execution of subroutine we need to load the return address back to this control address register return address of the main program back to this control address register so these are the four different possibilities taken as an input to this multiplexer okay so based on the requirement multiplexer select one of these input and based on that different address register sorry different address information loaded into this control address register okay so here we have the selection pin s1 and s0 based on the value of this selection pin this multiplexer select one among this input as the method of loading control address register this selection pin are actually set based on the value of our four different inputs what are they i1 i0 t and i2 okay i1 i0 t and i2 based on the value of this input this selection values are changed or we can set the value of set this selection pin multiplexers selection pin s1 and s0 based on this four input i1 i0 t and i2 this t input is actually indicate or t input is used for testing the status of status bits various status bits in addition here we have two more inputs clock pulse and clear this clear input is actually provided to this control address register when uh, before starting the program execution before starting the program execution we want to clear the control address register so in such situation only this clear input become active and also here we have the clock pulse this clock pulse is actually used for synchronize the activities right activities of this stack unit here we have a particular stack unit and this control address or loading unit okay so this clock pulses by changing different clock pulses we can uh, perform this loading activity over this control address register and here we have the stack unit the stack unit is actually used here for supporting subroutine execution subroutine calling and returning okay so this stack root stack circuit became active based on the output of these two and gates these two and gates decide whether to uh, activate this particular stack circuit or not okay so all these are about the circuitry of our microprogram sequencer next we can consider the various functionalities that uh, this microprogram sequencer can perform okay so based on the input i2 i1 i0 and t we can set the selection pin value of our multiplexer based on its value it can perform different activities now we can combine this function table with the previous circuit and discuss one after another each of this functionality okay so consider the first case itself i2 is don't care t is don't care i1 and i0 both are zero okay so from this uh, table it is clear that for the value of i1 and i0 if it is 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 in these three cases we don't want to consider the input comes over this i2 and t input in these two case in these three cases the t input and i2 input does not affect our loading activity in the next case if i1 equal to 1 and i0 equal to 1 we also want to consider the value of i2 and t okay if it is not 1 1 in other three cases we don't want to consider the value of i2 t whatever it may be it does not affect the loading activity but in case of this if i1 equal to 1 and i0 equal to 1 we need to consider the i2 value and t value also okay so here i1 with 1 i0 equal to 1 we need to consider the cases 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 for this i2 and t now we can consider these activities one after another so first case 
i1 equal to 0 and i0 equal to 0. Okay, so here these two are dawn case. i1 is directly connected with the selection pin S1. But S0 is set with the output of this particular circuit. Okay, this circuit means the complemented form of I1 and the test input for the input to this OR gate. The output of this OR gate and I0 form the input of this AND gate and the output of this AND gate decide a zero value. So based on this particular first configuration here both I1 I0 equal to zero right that means S1 is zero. If one among this AND gate input is 0, no doubt the output become 0. We don't want to consider the other part. If one among this input of this AND gate becomes 0, obviously S0 equal to 0. So this is the case. So S1 0, S0 means, S0 0 means decimal 0. This is the case of starting a new microprogram execution so we want to load an external address to this control address register right so here we want to consider one more thing in this particular selection case if this uh, circuitry become active or if we want to make this circuitry of this stack if we want to make this active no here we have no activity for this particular circuit here it is not involved here right because here we want to uh, load an external address information address from an external source to this control address register right so is, the, uh, is this particular case valid here check for this okay so one of this AND gate input what are the input of this AND gate I1 directly connected, I0 uh, complemented form of I1 test input, I0 sorry, I2 right, I1 I0 and test input. These are the four input of this AND gate. And for this AND gate, complemented form of I0 and complemented form of I1 and I0 directly taken as the input of this AND gate. This AND gate output decide whether to activate POP operation over the stack register. And this AND gate output decide whether to perform push operation over this stack register. In order to perform this stack pushing and popping, here we have a special register, stack pointer. Using that, we can decide the stack point element. Right. So, based on our first input configuration, here one among this input is 0. At least one input equal to 0, the output of this AND becomes 0. Here also, the output of this AND becomes 0. If this two AND gate output becomes 0 means we don't want to perform any push operation and pop operation. That means this particular circuitry for this stack is now inactive in our first case. Consider second one. Again I2 don't care test don't care I1 0 I0 1. I1 0 means S1 0. I0 1 means one among this AND gate input is 1. Right. And here it is 0 complement but complemented form of 0 is 1. One of this OR gate input is 1 means output of this OR gate is 1 that form the input of this AND. So here it is 1. 0 1. 0 1 in decimal is 1. Okay, what is it? This actually indicate loading from stack top. This control address register is loaded with an address information which is available from the stack top. Okay, loading from stack register. 
track file register so in that case for loading or popping from the stack register we need to activate deactivate this particular operation right is this valid for this particular configuration so here one of the input a zero so here it is zero and here this one this input is the complemented form of i1 zero complement is one and this one i zero directly one one and one output is one this and gate output become one that means we need to activate this stack circuit tree and perform a pop operation over it in order to perform this pop operation we need to perform a decrement then perform a read operation pop means decrement stack pointer by one then perform read push means increment stack pointer then perform a write okay so here we want to perform a pop operation so decrement the stack pointer by one and from that location read the content that means that indicate the address information or the return address to the main program what is this situation actually this situation actually indicate returning from a subroutine to the main program by fetching the return address from the stack top okay so the return address is loaded back into control address register then we can resume the execution of our main program now this is the case so consider the other one again don't care with i1 equal to 1 i0 equal to 0 i1 equal to 1 i0 equal to 0 one of this and gate input is 0 means a 0 equal to 0 1 0 in decimal is 2 to actually indicate an increment operation so this particular two input actually indicate a sequential instruction execution so control address register content is incremented by one and load back into the control register right so in this case is this circuitry want to become active no so check whether this valid here or not based on this particular input configuration so here i0 is 0 so one of this and gate input is 0 so it output becomes 0 i0 is again connected with this and gate also so output is 0 that means this circuitry become inactive in this case of selection right consider the other one now it is 1 1 if i11 1, 1, i01 1, in that case we need to consider the value of i2 and t 1 1 with t equal to 0 and i2 equal to 0 so s1 equal to 1 so one of this and gate input equal to 1 so or gate input here it is 0 and other it is other input also 0 0 0 means here it is 0 and s0 become 0 s1 s0 1 0 1 0 again pointing to input 2 of this multiplexer input 2 of this multiplexer means increment operation again current content of control address register is incremented by 1 that address is load back into the same control address register okay again consider the output of this and gates whether this uh, circuitry become active in this case no here we don't want to perform any push and pop operation so consider this here test input is 0 one of the input is 0 here so output becomes 0 and for this one complement is 0 so this and gate output also equal to 0 that means this particular circuitry is inactive in this case next one 1 1 with i2 equal to 0 and t equal to 1 okay s1 equal to 1 one of the and gate input is 1 t input is 1 so or gate output is 1 here it is 1 1 1 1 means decimal 3 so this is the case of branching we need to branch somewhere okay so the branch address is loaded from the current micro instruction address field the address field of current micro micro instruction 
currently it executing micro instructions address field contained the branch address which is loaded into this control address register in this particular case okay in this situation whether this circuit we want to become active check this so here i2 is zero so and gate output is zero complement of this one is zero so output is zero so this this circuit will become inactive here so this particular branching actually indicate branching from one point of our program to some other distant location of the same program that is why this circuit will become inactive in this case okay branching from one point of the same program to some other point like executing if else case okay so in this case we don't want to store any return address anywhere okay consider other case case is i1 i0 11 with t equal to 0 and i2 equal to 1 this is 1 and one of the and gate input is 1 uh, or gate output is 0 so 1 0 1 0 means decimal 2 to indicate an increment operation right increment operation means current value of control address register incremented by 1 and load back into the same control address register right and again here whether this uh, circuit of stack become active or want to become active no here this is just an increment operation this circuit uh, don't want to become in active here consider is this valid here based on this input configuration this test input is zero so one of this and gate input is zero so output is zero so one complement is zero one of the and gate input is zero so obviously output is zero that means this part become inactive here no stack operation here just an increment and loading back into the control address register indicating sequential instruction execution next case all are one the last case okay s1 equal to 1 s0 equal to 1 again want to perform a branching so what is the difference here from the previous case of branching here we have a difference okay so in this case we need to perform branching so that we need to load this control address register with the branch target address from the address field of currently executing micro instruction okay but here the branch target address is the starting of a subroutine starting address of a subroutine this is the case or this is the difference of this particular branching with previous branching previous branching is actually branching from one location of the current program to some other location distant location of the same program just like an e else case execution but here it is a subroutine calling so we need to load the control address register with the address field information of current micro instruction currently executing micro instruction right so after that here we want to perform some more operation what is it so based on this configuration here this and gate output become one check this here it is one and this is one this again one t is also one so this and gate output become one this and gate actually control the push operation of stack so for pushing we need to increment the stack pointed by one and also we want to perform a write operation over the stack register what value we want to write here here we want to write an incremented value of our control address register content whatever value present now in this control address register which get incremented by one that is loaded into the stack top right after that we need to load this control address register by a subroutine starting address from where it is available it is available from the address field of currently executing micro instruction okay so note the difference 
so this particular branching actually indicate a subroutine calling and the previous case of branching indicate calling from or jump from one location of the program to some other location of the same program okay so all these are the activities that a microprogram sequencer can perform